Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, last week I started, um, I did a couple of videos that I said were going to kind of be a series because I felt there was so much information that I wanted to share on dog reactivity and dog aggression that it merited um, more than just one video. It's just too much to take in at one time. Um, so I did two, I did part one, part two, and um, I was planning on, on addressing part three, but right now there is a pretty much of a crisis going on uh, with three of my clients right now, and they're all the same dilemma, um, severe dog reactivity, uh, some aggression as well, some very dangerous situations where um, a, a person could get hurt and a dog could actually lose their home or even their life. So I wanted to address this because I'm really um, involved in this and I'm really, really, really concerned with this. Um, and it's on the same subject, but this is kind of crisis management type of a situation right now that I want to discuss. So some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about aren't, aren't going to be fun. Uh, they're not gonna be things that the vast majority of people want to follow um, or abide by, but um, they're certainly a lot better than having to deal with a severe bite or losing their, their pet. So here's what's happening in one case in particular is there was a Connie Corso who was at the shelter. He had been returned twice, I think. Um, I don't know all the circumstances behind him, but the dog looked like when he was at the shelter, I follow lots of rescue groups, work with a lot of different rescue groups, and he looked pretty terrified in that environment, which is understandable. Um, he was pulled by someone very well-meaning that wanted to give him a good home, someone that actually is a um, has uh, worked with dogs before, uh, not not the way I work with them, but has definitely worked with dogs before, and um, uh, she brought him home. And this is, from my perspective, this is this is what's happened: is that they believe that this dog was. I don't know if if, they're, if it's just something they think or or if it's something they know, but they believe that this dog was used to fight, um, and that he had been abused and, and traumatized out of that situation. So when they brought him home from what I can see is they kind of stayed stuck in that story that this poor Connie Corso had been abused, had almost died at the shelter, had been returned twice, and now he's gonna come and live with them. So what that does, because we're human and because we're compassionate for the most part as humans, especially when we rescue an animal, then we pour our heart out to them and we basically just flood them with love, which is great, except it totally messes the dog up because the dog doesn't understand why they're getting all of this unearned affection and all of this soft energy and soft, um, the, the humans around them are all in this sort of a pity type of mode for the dog. And what the dog actually needs is somebody to follow, somebody that can be strong, that can lead them out of the situation that they're in. Um, I've seen a lot of, of uh, instability in this breed, in Connie Corsos. But of course, no one's going to bring a balanced Connie Corso to me. <laughs> right? Why would they? So I tend to get dogs that are damaged in some way, shape, or form. But I do know a lot of, I follow two count, accounts in particular, um, that uh, people that have multiple Connie Corsos unaltered in their homes that are amazing, amazing with other dogs, kids, cats, everything. So I know it can be done. And the Connie Corsos that I've been working with are amazing. They're just feral. Um, but getting better every single day. But in this particular situation, this dog, um, yeah, there's a real possibility that this dog may lose this home as well if these things aren't straightened out. So here's what I saw in the very beginning after the dog was brought back to the home. Um, I saw the um, woman, the, the mother, parent of the home on the floor, um, kissing and petting the dog's head, had her face right up against him. And I just was holding my breath watching it because um, she didn't know this dog well. The dog is shut down, terrified. He had been growling at everybody uh, that first week that he was there. And yet she was on the floor with her face right up against his, which was an accident waiting to happen. Fortunately, nothing did. But what she's continued to do is to coddle him. She feels sorry for him. I feel sorry for him too, but I wouldn't coddle him because I know that that wouldn't help him move forward. What, what's happened is she's actually created, um, she has two sons, she's actually created targets out of her sons because this dog has now become 
he's basically claiming her. She's his. He went from almost dying at the shelter, which he doesn't know what that means, but he was without anybody at all. He's come into their home, and now he's got this woman kind of wrapped up around him all the time, giving him all of this unearned affection and feeling really sorry for him and hanging on to the story that he was abandoned and abused and so on and so forth. Now, one of the sons can't get anywhere near her, and he's only been there three weeks. Can't get anywhere near, um, son can't get near his mother without the dog going after him, and he weighs 125 pounds, uh, which is the size of the largest Connie Corso that I have here. That's a lot of power, and it's really, it, and he's, he weighs more than the mother does. So he's already nipped the pant leg of the, of the child. Um, so if this doesn't get resolved, it's, it's gonna be impossible. I mean, the dog will have to be rehomed because you can't put a child at risk, even a adult child. Now he's not adult, he's a teenager, but that's sort of an adult. But um, in any event, this needs to be like immediately resolved. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you guys about some things that I would do that again are not things that you would have to do with a dog long term forever and ever and ever but I'm going to tell you what you would do if you were in crisis mode with this dog which this is absolutely a crisis the woman is terrified the son is terrified it's an accident waiting to happen stop all affection number one all affection gone hard for people to understand this but dogs are not primates they don't have arms they don't hug in their natural world they don't practice the same kind of affection that we do where we hug and kiss each other they don't do that in their world as most of you guys know the vast majority of children who are bitten are bitten in the face why is that because kids come over and they hug a dog around around the neck usually so their little faces are right there that's something that humans do with each other but when you do it to a dog you're actually hugging a dog around the neck which is what another dog would do if he was trying to dominate another dog and what would happen is either the dog that was being dominated would surrender and move away or he would challenge him and a fight would ensue when that happens a lot of times and the dog is being held around the neck the dog doesn't feel like they have the option to go into flight so the only option that's left is to go into fight and that's a bite because they don't know how to they, they can't say i'm really uncomfortable with this i know people don't want to hear it i'm sorry but this is the truth this is what happens this is how people get bitten but in this particular case it's more than just that because the more she dotes on this dog the more powerful he's going to become and the more the bigger the target her own children are going to be because he's going to actually see them as two individuals that need to be kept away from her, okay? She said in one instance, they were actually petting him, and after they finished petting him um, is when the bite happened. No need to pet him, not right now. This dog needs to be compliant before he gets all these privileges. Always, always compliance before privilege. It's just like you would do with a child. I use this analogy ad nauseum, I know, but you don't give your car keys to your child when he gets his learner's permit if he hasn't, is he, if he's shown that he's not responsible or he's gonna show up at midnight when you told him to come home at nine. Okay, silly analogy, but you don't give someone responsibility and privilege when they're not up for the task. And this, this dog is right now trying to decompress. What he's looking for is guidance. He's not looking for belly rubs or affection or baby talk or being on the bed, which is another thing I saw. I'm always watching. So I was watching the social media site before they even contacted me and I saw one of the kids on the bed with the dog. Don't let your dog on the bed, especially in this situation. That is where your intimate scent is. That is where your most private space is. Your dog is up high on the same level with you. You've got a dog that is unstable, that is in a new environment, that is shown that he's not yet trustworthy, that's been returned twice from the shelter. He's growling at everybody. Do not put that dog on the bed. It's not gonna make anything any better. It's just gonna make things worse and put everybody in more danger, okay? Um, what he needs, what I'm recommending to this family is that they immediately get a crate, get one of those, uh, what I like the, the most are the ultra, um, very kennels, they're the airline approved kennels, and you could, I mean, I could fit in one. I, my Connie Corsos sleep in them, they absolutely love them. But they're more enclosed than wire kennels, so I, I'm sure that dogs like them more than they like wire kennels because they like that kind of enclosed feeling better, especially these dogs that are insecure and fearful. So she needs to get a crate. 
um, give him plenty of crate time where there's just downtime, you know, maybe put it in a room where it's dark and quiet, or at the very least in part of the room where it is quiet, so he has some downtime, kind of like a child that needs to go into a crib occasionally and rest and decompress because you don't want people just doting on him all the time. Um, they're having trouble walking him. They said that when he sees other dogs that at first he gets reactive and then he goes into this fear mode like he screams almost. That was the term that they used, not mine, but that he screamed. So obviously he's vocalizing, which sounds very much like a dog that was not socialized at all. Um, not a, Maybe he was fighting. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's if, if that's what they were told or if that's what they're assuming, I have no idea. But his experiences with other dogs have obviously not been healthy or he probably wouldn't respond that way. So give him plenty of crate time. Um, walking him, I would recommend not just because it's my leash, but because it's such a good leash for getting control. My Corsos, my dogs all use them as we have a, my partner and I designed a leash called the Lucas Agnew leash. And um, it's a super high quality leash. I'll put the link in. Um, underneath this um, that you can get, but it has a loop. We call it the power loop where it goes over the nose. So it controls the head. It's kind of like a bridle on a horse. You you would never put a rope around a horse you know, that weighs, you know, thousands of pounds and drag the horse around and you wouldn't get very far. So, um, or the horse would drag you. So what this does is it actually loops around the dog's nose uh, or muzzle and it controls the it controls the head. So it acts kind of like a chill pill effect on the dog. So that might be very <coughs> helpful. Um, in, in this particular situation. But the primary thing is do not coddle. No baby talk, no resources around the house. Pick up toys, pick up no bones, nothing. I'm talking, we're going cold turkey with this because we have to redo this relationship because the imprint that was made on this dog when he came into the home was one of basically, I'm soft, um, you've been through trauma, so I'm just gonna pour myself out to you. It's just not gonna work. It's he's a troubled dog. Um, more love, more affection is not going to help a troubled dog any more than it's going to help necessarily a troubled child. Yes, understanding and guidance and um, is going to help a child, but just not you know excessive amounts of affection, especially unearned on a dog that's just come into the home. I always tell people when they get a new dog to treat it like a first date. Don't give away everything you have on the first date. And yes, I did say that, and I mean it. Um, that's just not a good policy to have with a dog. So there's probably gonna be some follow-up on this. I'm gonna be going to LA this upcoming week and I'm hoping to meet up with this client, um, not my client yet, but the, with this woman and her dog and her, and her kids and uh, see if I can help them a little bit further. I desperately wanna save this dog and keep him in this home and I desperately want to help them and keep them safe. That's more important than anything, okay? so. Again, hard, hard things to talk about, um, but this is dog reactivity and dog aggression uh, when it really goes, goes bad, when it really goes awry, and we don't want people hurt, okay? All right, guys, love you, and I will talk to you soon. Send me some questions and um, other subject matter, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I want to address lots of different things, but I'm going to stay on this subject of dog reactivity. I have other things I want to talk about it. It's just that this came in. Um, today and I had I won't even go into the other two cases because they're equally disturbing other two uh, cases of the same type of situation um, just this week alone with two existing clients so um, don't make your dog too powerful you guys especially a dog like that um, Connie Corsos are a extremely powerful breed so are pit bulls so are Rottweilers I mean I've got golden retrievers and cocker spaniels that are powerful you, you don't have to just be a dominant breed dog to uh, bite someone. So um, lead your dog, guide your dog, discipline your dog. You can still love your dog, but the dog is looking for guidance from you more than they're looking for anything else. Okay. All right. I already said I love you, but I do love you. Okay. Bye.